Hi everyone, Brightphone here. Back today with another one. We're going to talk about an old one today. As a matter of fact, I can't believe I'm still talking about this in 2024. Shame on you, Blue Teamers. I can't believe this still works. So what I want to talk to you today is about Responder. I can't believe I'm still talking about Responder in 2024. But I have to. Why? Because it still works. That means Blue Teamers have not cleaned this up yet, right? If your environment still has LLMNR turned on, if you have NBTNS turned on in your environment, go fix that now. Stop the video and go fix that. This is sad that this still works, but it does, right? So, Responder. For those of you who are not aware what Responder is, I'm sure some of you out there don't know, right? Responder is a project that was originally developed for Spider Labs, developed by Laurent Gaff. This thing is amazing, but look at some of these ages. Nine years, right? And what Responder is, it's a multi-relay. It basically tricks Windows into giving credentials up. This is everybody's first pen test. Every time an, a pen test is run, they're going to do this. So why not make their lives a little harder, right? Make everyone's lives harder. Make my life harder, right? I don't want to find this. I don't want it to work. But it still works in a lot of environments. It's very frustrating. So anyway, Responder, very common tool. Most of you are already familiar with this. If not, you can take a look at, at what it is and what it does. But to just basically explain it, essentially, in a Windows LAN, there are steps that are taken when a host can't resolve a name, a domain name, or a name in the environment. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to reach out to DNS and see if it can resolve it, right? And say it's a share, right? It's an SMB share. It will reach out the DNS server, and the DNS server says, okay, I don't know what that is. Then it will consult NetBIOS, which that's a very old protocol, right? And then it will consult link local multicast name resolution, or uh, it's basically like DNS over multicast, which multicast says, hey, just spray this everywhere and they'll respond on the address that's known for LLM and R. All Windows hosts talk LLM and R and NBTNS by default. So what does that mean? Cool, you got your patching all handled, great. But guess what? You didn't harden? I can still get your creds. Every time, right? I can't believe I'm still talking about this. I really can't. It's, this is so old by now. But essentially what it does, just to keep going here, once it has uh, found its LLM and R, Responder says, hey, that's me, right? Hey, I'm, I'm whatever you're looking for. I'm that guy, come get it, right? And it says, send me your creds. So what does the host do? Sends it a challenge. Now I say challenge because a lot of people make the mistake here in not knowing this is not the NT hash, right? It is not the actual hash. It is the calculated net NTLM hash through the NTLM one-way function, right? So the NTLM one-way function, it runs it through a timestamp, it adds a domain, and encrypts it, and then sends it over the network. So it's not something you can just pass the hash with. You still have to crack it, right? It's a net NTLM hash. Now you can relay that hash onto things and use that, but it is, it's tougher to crack. Right? It's not just, look, I got your juicy creds, but still works. Still certainly works for relaying. Uh, very, very common for relaying, even still to date. So, old attack. We blue teamers know this is going to happen, right? We've got our environment straight. We've shut off LLMNR. We've shut off MBTNS. We've put on SMB signing. We've done all the things we're supposed to do. So now, how can we mess with the adversary? We know they're going to do this. So that when we know an attacker is going to do something, we can set a trap. 
You can use deception. I'm going to show you two ways to set a trap. And then I'm going to show you a way to, to build a, uh, a canary system, right? So most of today's video is about deceiving responder, right? So the first one we're going to take a look at is part of the CRED Defense Toolkit. Now I will warn you, the CRED Defense Toolkit is no longer supported. But that doesn't mean it doesn't work, right? Old attack, old tools. That's basically what you're going to be dealing with in a lot of these cases. But if you go into the scripts directory here, you're going to see a script in here called Responder Guard. This one is great. It still works like a champ, right? So I'll show you what this looks like. So we have Responder Guard over here. We have our Kali box. And this is just a PowerShell administrative console. Now, what's nice about Responder Guard is it will not only tell you that it found Responder, but it will pass a fake credential to Responder. And then you're slowing the adversary down. They've got to crack that. They think they've got something. They reuse the credential. Then you can catch where they are. That's if they move from their current location, right? But you quite simply set the username and the password and the domain, and you tell it to invoke Responder Guard. Now, I do Agent here, and I do LLMNR Enabled. I give it a Honey Token Seed, and then I tell it Go, because this way it will generate an event in the event logs. So see, it will try to create the Responder Guard uh, event area if it's not created, and then it will enter the processing loop. And now it's waiting for something to try to run Responder. So if we come over here to our Kali box and we run Responder, we're going to run Responder by sudo Responder-I, ETH0 now. This is an alias. So it doesn't matter if your uh, net card is not ETH0, ETH0 will still work, and then we're going to give it dash V for verbose. So here we go, give it the password. And now Responder is running. And in a second, we'll see some credentials come across here. And there we go. We now have Hack Lab Administrator. Man, boy. If I was doing a pen test right here, I'd be like, ooh, I got something nice. I just need to crack this or try to pass it. But it's fake. So if I come over here, notice submitting Honey Token Creds, Hack Lab Administrator, and the password to that guy. That's our bad guy. Nice, right? And one of the other beautiful things about this is if I come over here to my application log and I hit refresh, you will see we have 8415. An LLMNR spoofer was discovered at this address. Now, what do you do when it's in the event logs? You send it to SIM and you create an alert, right? Very simple. Create an alert, send it to SIM, right? You just detected responder. Now, I still find some EDRs have trouble with this. They don't do a great job. Even a lot of the modern ones don't do a great job because this is network style monitoring. They have to see both sides of the connection to know that it's fake or send out fake credentials and see a response, right? And that makes noise on the network. So a lot of people don't want that. But still, this is a good way to do it, right? If you can't, if your EDR is not good at detecting this, you can do this. Now, one of the downfalls here is that the LLMNR is multicast. Multicast do not leave a VLAN, right? They don't leave a subnet. So if you have a whole bunch of VLANs, you would need one of these in every VLAN, or you would need to do multicast routing. Now, multicast routing is expensive from a network scenario. But if you want to do multicast routing, you can do it to a single box and have it do detection this way. I recommend we wait on some of the later solutions I'm going to show you, which will run on cheap hardware. But this one, great for deception. If you've got a Windows jump host in every subnet or something like that, you've got a box you can run it on. Just spin this up and let it go and have it come back to SIM. All right. That was our first solution. Our second solution, say you've got Linux boxes in every subnet. We can then run a tool called Honeycreds. Honeycreds, another deception tool, and it will inject a credential into Responder, much like we did there. And this one does HTTP and SMB, and it will respond on LLMNR as well. But it certainly works. Uh, this one, a bit older, 
as you can see, but not quite as old as some of these, three years old, four years old, still works and quite simple to run. Very simple to stand up and get going. So let's take a look at that. We've got our Linux box over here. And of course it logs me out every second, but we'll get that back in. And we've got Honeycreds over here. We're just gonna run python3 honeycreds.py. And we're gonna see, it's gonna start sending events out on the network. And it knows the domain. It says, here's our password. Here's our SQL dev01. And then we'll come back over here and we will run responder one more time. And it's still running. Let me go ahead and check this because I've noticed sometimes it will do a weird reversion. So we want to take a look at our honeycreds.conf. We want to make sure that there is, and it did. This needs to be removed. Fully qualified domain name to, to get this to work, you have to blank it out. And as a matter of fact, I'm not sure how it reverted there, but it did. So essentially what we need to do now, we're gonna run Python 3 honeycreds.py. And now notice it sent the poison response. So don't come over here, we see username hacklab honeycreds, which is pretty obvious, that's the default. Uh, and then you hear honeycreds right here. You can change that in the config file. If we go back to nanohoneycreds.config, you want to make sure you're changing this username to something believable, right? Uh, in our case, we'll do SQL dev admin, and then you can give it a password. You can give it anything you want there and your default domain and what that box, whatever your default host name is that you want to uh, make work. You can run it again, and then it'll tell you what it's sending out here, right? But make sure you blank that fully qualified domain name. I've noticed it won't work if you don't do that. But there you go. Another method of deception. If you've got Linux in the environment and you want to deceive. Now, if you don't want to deceive and you just want to detect and you know you can react fast, then you can take a little Raspberry Pi, cheap little box. You can run Docker on that. And you can run our third project we're going to look at here, which is Canary Pi. Canary Pi will detect NBNS spoofing, LMNR spoofing, multicast DNS spoofing, three responder detections, TCP port scanning, rogue IPv6 server detection. This is why I recommend this project. Mitem 6, super common. As many of you know, IPv6 is on by default in Windows. Mitem 6 takes advantage of that. I do have another video on my channel for Mitem 6. You should check that out. This one will hand out an IPv6 address in a subnet and take over the DNS of a host. Super commonly used. But this method, you can detect Mitem 6 usage as well as these other responder things. So this is nice and you can run it on a tiny little Raspberry Pi, right? So I'll show you what this looks like as well. We'll go ahead and kill off responder just to clear the screen so it's not so obvious. We're then gonna make sure that our other projects are closed. We've closed Honeycreds, clear that out. And over here we have canary.py, we'll clear this. Canary.py runs in Docker. So you can download a Docker image and if you have monitoring at your SIM, you can pull this back with the agent or you can have canary.py send to syslog. So then you've got monitoring of these things on a cheap Raspberry Pi that you stick in a subnet. There's certainly good other things you can do from a deception perspective once you're outfit that, outfitted that way too. You've got a bunch of Raspberry Pis in all your different subnets. You've got a centralized control mechanism. You can put out all sorts of little deception things, honey creds, all sorts of hidden things that will deceive a threat actor, right? But quite simply, if we do canary.py, we're just gonna do Docker Compose up here. I'm not going to do the dash D and daemonize it like you should. If you're going to do this in the, in the real world, you want to do daemonize and you want it to run in the background, right? You want to spin up these containers. So we'll do Docker compose up. We can see attaching to canary.py and it's already attached to that. And then we'll spin up responder here and we should start seeing some credentials come in. And here we go. 
and in just a minute when it runs its cycle, it should show up with the detection. Sometimes this can take a few seconds. There we go. Notice it says a spoofed LMNR response for PJF and LOCX. And it gives us the IP address and the MAC address. And over here, we don't have any credentials. We just see that it says poisoned. So we're basically doing the detection. Now, if an adversary sees that, they might actually know something's up. So you might want to change that. But still, they probably aren't even really watching this that closely. They're just running it. They set this to run and just wait. So they'll see a whole bunch of stuff coming. But what you will see is this if you're watching the console. But the idea here is you don't want to watch the console. What do you want to do? send it to sim. So if we come over here and we take a look at our elastic box, go over here to just to elastic, we can search our events that we have created from our tools, right? So first we'll do responder guard. So we'll do event code and the event code is 8415. And we can see we are able to send that to SIM because it was in our application log. And we see responder guard right here. And if we go over here, we see an LMNR spoofer was discovered at this address. So you have found your adversary running the tool because you had a PowerShell script running in the background. Now, if you want to do the Raspberry Pi method that I mentioned, you need to make sure that you are either sending Canary Pi via syslog to your SIM, or you have the agents on the base host and you're doing Docker monitoring. If you're doing either of those, you can get it over here into your SIM, do LMNR just like that. And then you're going to see we see a spoofed response from our Docker container logs right here. We can see this is our Canary Pi. And then we just come over here and on the third page here, we can see a spoofed LMNR response for this was detected from this IP address and this MAC address. So you can give this to your network engineering team and say, hey, where is this? Go find this, this is bad, right? So you just ferreted out the adversary. So the fact that I'm still talking about responder in 2024, annoying. But if you have got your ducks in a row and you want to catch a pen tester, you want to catch an adversary, this is a good way. They're going to try this. They absolutely are. Every pen tester is going to try a responder. They are because it works. So if they try it, now you have the upper hand. You know where they are. You have them. You can feed them fake credentials. You can do some mysterious things to detect things like MITEM6 and detect LLM and R spoofing before it ever becomes a problem, right? And if your EDR doesn't do this, then now you can do it with free projects. All right, that's all I have for you today. I wanna to thank everybody who joined me for SANS Orlando, uh, my last teach for SEC 599 Purple Team with SANS. I do have an upcoming class here in uh, San Antonio, 2024, San Antonio, Texas, U.S. This one's going to be live online. So SEC 599 is Defeating Advanced Adversaries Purple Team Tactics and Kill Chain Defenses. Essentially, we teach you a lot of the things that I have here in my channel. Very fun class. You learn red and you learn blue. So I've got one coming up here in San Antonio, and I've also got one coming up here in Virginia Beach. Uh, of course, check out the class with any of the other instructors as well. Great class overall. Lots of fun to teach this. But thank you if you are joining my channel from my classes or if you just want to take a SANS class with me, meet me in person, feel free. It's an awesome time. All right. Thank you, everyone. And hack the planet to defend better.